In this video, we'll look at the process for provisioning a production instance of Microsoft Dynamics 365 for finance and operations. This diagram shows information about timing, prerequisites, and key activities after production is deployed. You should request a production environment after user acceptance testing, UAT, has been completed and signed off by business users. Before you request a production environment, you must make sure that all activities and phases in the project methodology and Microsoft Dynamics lifecycle services, also known as LCS, are marked as completed. This status is indicated when the circle for every phase up through the deploy phase is green and contains a check mark. The next step is to complete the subscription estimator that represents the user and transactional load that's expected in production after go live. This estimate is captured by using the Usage Profile Microsoft Excel Worksheet. You can download this worksheet by clicking Sample Usage Profile next to the Purchase History button. This estimate is captured by using the Usage Profile Microsoft Excel Worksheet. You can download this worksheet by clicking Sample Usage Profile next to the Purchase History button. You can upload any number of estimates. However, LCS will consider only the estimate that's marked as the active estimate. When you fill in the usage profile, note that the number of users can't exceed the number of subscriptions that have been purchased. To check the number and type of subscription licenses that your organization has purchased, if you aren't sure, you can click Purchase History. The next step is to complete the Go Live checklist. This checklist covers the key tasks that should be completed to help guarantee that you're ready for production deployment. Email the completed checklist to your assigned Microsoft Solution Architect or to go-live at Microsoft.com. Microsoft will then schedule a go-live review and go over the checklist to verify production readiness and also to identify any possible risks or blockers to go-live. After these steps are completed, you're ready to submit a production instance deployment request. To submit this request, click the Configure button for production. Complete the configuration steps and then submit the request. The status is then changed to queued to indicate that the deployment request has been sent to Microsoft. Note that the version of finance and operations that's requested for production should be the same as the version of the user acceptance testing environment. The next step is code deployment. At first, a production instance has the standard version of finance and operations. If custom code was developed during the implementation, customers or partners can deploy it by creating a deployable package in the asset library. Deployable packages should first be deployed in a user acceptance testing environment and should undergo appropriate testing. After testing is completed, the package should be marked as Release Candidate. To apply the Release Candidate in production, open the Environment Details view for the production environment, click Maintain, and then click Apply Updates to apply the package. The next step is to move configuration data to production. You have two options. You can submit a service request of the other request type to ask Microsoft to copy the database from the golden configuration environment to production. For this option, the configuration environment should be on a Microsoft Azure SQL database. That is, it should be a tier two or above sandbox environment. Note that you can use this option only the first time that production is deployed. This option isn't applicable for phased rollout scenarios. Alternatively, you can move data by using data entities and data packages from the data management workspace in the application. The environment is now ready for the implementation team to perform data migration and cutover activities. This brings us to the end of this presentation. We hope you found this information useful. Thank you for watching.